What's up lovely people? So yesterday Qualcomm released a new reference design to go along with their new fancy XR2 chip that will be used in most if not all standalone VR devices going forward. This is a piece of very important news for the future of VR, especially the Oculus Quest, which is currently based on Qualcomm's outdated Snapdragon 835 chipset. This new design paves the way for not only Oculus Quest, but also every other major company wanting to jump into the standalone VR market. The next Oculus Quest will more than likely be running on this newer chipset, and Qualcomm has outlined everything that is possible using this new technology for upcoming headsets and their new reference design, giving us an idea of what the future of Oculus Quest and other potential standalone VR headsets looks like. So let's see what they've got cooking up for us. So the reference design is a set of guidelines like a blueprint that Qualcomm gives to hardware manufacturers like Oculus on how to create a new headset that makes the best use of the new technology like the display, the cameras, the connectivity, and etc. So it's guaranteed to be the best possible product using their chipset. As you can imagine, this speeds up the design time for a new headset by a considerable amount, since the companies have nearly half the work already done and just have to focus on choosing which of the features they want to implement in the device. And then of course manufacturing and everything that comes with that. The new reference design announced yesterday by Qualcomm is far superior to the standalone headsets that are currently available on the market. This includes the Quest, of course, but also HoloLens and even Vive Focus Plus. Qualcomm said in a statement, the XR2 reference design has two times the CPU and GPU performance, four times more video bandwidth, six times higher resolution, and 11 times AI improvement compared to our currently widely adopted XR platform. And by widely adopted XR platform, they're talking about the Oculus Quest. So two times computational power and six times higher resolution than the Quest? Are they insane? Now that is next gen if I've ever seen anything. And as if that weren't already enough, Qualcomm continues in their statement saying, the reference design supports up to seven cameras. It features two internal cameras, one for each eye to support eye tracking. It also includes four external cameras, two RGB cameras for mixed reality experiences, and two for head tracking, which can also be used to generate depth maps. This reference design allows partners to assemble different configurations with additional cameras for facial and lip tracking. Okay, so that's a lot of cameras. And here's where I think they're being a bit overambitious, but like I said, these features are take it or leave it. It's just going over what's possible with the new chip. I do not expect Oculus Quest to have lip tracking, for example, anytime soon. Sure, they demoed something like this at Oculus Connect 6 presentation last year, but they also said the implementation was quite a few years off. Eye tracking, though, may actually be something we see in the next Oculus Quest. It may sound crazy now, but more and more headsets are incorporating the feature, even if the headsets currently using it are geared towards business purposes rather than gaming, but it does seem like something Oculus is already looking into anyways. But let's pick that quote apart just a little bit more. It says, inside out tracking cameras now can be used to generate depth maps, so the Guardian system and pass-through functionality are going to see a major improvement, considering the pass-through cameras will finally support RGB, so we won't be looking through a black and white speckled Predator Vision camera anymore. It'll now be in full color, with depth perception being tracked way better as well, which also makes hand tracking 100% better than its current iteration with the new fancy setup. New headsets based on Qualcomm's new chipset will also have faster hardware video decoding, so users will be able to enjoy up to 8K 360-degree videos at 60 frames per second, bringing standalone VR headsets like Oculus Quest right up there with some of the most powerful VR headsets on PC in terms of media viewing. Though streaming content through YouTube and such does not seem like it's going to support the feature anytime soon, and it's hard to say if they ever will for a while because streaming 8K content is kind of a leap. But the icing on all this cake is 5G connectivity. Finally, a standalone headset may have 5G connection and not only Wi-Fi. This means the headset will be truly usable anywhere at any time with a 5G subscription. Faster streaming, faster downloads, faster everything, wherever you want. Play VR chat online with friends in a baseball field, download a new game while on a road trip. Wi-Fi is old news, so bring on the 5G virtual world. After all, CNET estimates that we'll have 1 billion people enabled to use 5G by 2023. So hopefully in the coming years, this can all become a reality. 
And while this all may seem really exciting, keep in mind that, as I said before, a reference design only offers various possibilities. But then it's the job of the company to implement features that they want to use or discard. As always, manufacturers need to find a compromise between features and price, because that's a major thing that the Quest has going for it right now is the cheaper price point. For instance, adding everything described in this reference design in today's market would cost over $1,500 to implement. So maybe the next Oculus Quest doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but I can speculate that we'll see a good amount of this stuff implemented in the upcoming next generation device. But what do you guys think that we'll see in a next gen quest? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching guys, and we'll catch up next time.